So very recently, I released a video with a very simple build. It was a tower in the middle of nowhere and looked pretty innocuous. But as I mentioned in that video, this was going to be the catalyst for another video, today's video. And today, we're gonna to be revealing what the secret is. So don't go anywhere. Hey Charlie fans, welcome back to another speed build video. Guys, in this one, I'm gonna be continuing our little narrative and our story and the fun that we were going from our very simple build last time. Again, that tower, it's, there's a video you can find, it's gonna be in the description below or I'll put it up here or whatever. But basically we're continuing off of that and going into the actual meat of this, which is going to be revealing the actual secret. Now, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is because I think it kind of will spoil it. I think you'll be able to tell pretty quickly what we're making. So it'll be pretty obvious once we get into it. But guys, that's just part of the fun. Hopefully you guys actually enjoyed the final product like I did. It was a lot of fun to make. And I think the style of video is something I'm kind of enjoying, but we'll see if we do it again in the future. Oh, and don't forget to check me out live on Twitch or on YouTube, guys. I usually stream every Tuesday or Thursday at around 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. So feel free to pop in, check it out, and enjoy the building process. Now, with all that said, guys, let's go ahead and actually get to this build, shall we? All right, guys, so here we are in the already excavated secret build. Now, as you can tell, I'm gonna be using a couple of stone slabs as well as some copper brick plating, all painted gray here, just to kind of create different rooms and outline everything. Of course, this is gonna be a sort of introduction to the design, which is gonna be very mechanically friendly. Let's put it that way. I don't wanna to give too many spoilers, but you should be able to tell what this is pretty quickly. So the stone slab is gonna be a lot of the foundation for this, and then we're gonna go ahead and try to create this initial sort of pump room. Uh, here, you'll see me making a couple of different vats, putting in some background walls, that kind of thing. And again, a lot of this is just outlining every different room and trying to separate things out. So this palladium column is that, some stairs, that kind of thing. Right now, the idea is to put in all this time and effort into creating this mechanical pump room. Um, you may be a little surprised what this tins are into, but you may also already know. So this is the primary vat that is holding our evil hand that we have been researching. The thinking behind this build was that if you're in Terraria and you're exploring, well, you're gonna need to understand how the creatures work if you wanna actually succeed here. So the idea was while your exploration continues above ground, well, below ground, a little bit more nefarious research is going. And part of that dark, nefarious nature is how this thing is powered, which as you can see, I'm putting down these animals, a couple of fans. Well, yeah, their life force is part of how this whole thing works. I know it's a little dark, but hey, sometimes you gotta lean into it. Now, being that this is a large kind of area that we're gonna have a lot of mechanical bits, that means we're gonna have a lot of piping. So you're gonna see me using a lot of different bricks, a lot of palladium column, that kind of thing. And here I'm gonna go with the patented pattern here that you kind of typically think of the caution tape with. So I'm using some portal blocks as well as some gem spark painted yellow and then paint that shadow paint. And then you end up with a nice cool little design and you can replicate this in a lot of other spots. I thought this looked pretty good overall and I just want to create a little bit more texture. From there, it's just kind of me messing around with different shapes for large mechanical vats. There's no real way to make this. I am, again, using a mixture of blocks here, everything from meteorite brick to copper plating to adamantite. Now, a big thing here is I do use a lot of this copper uh, pipe wall, uh, painted a lot of different colors. You'll see me play around with this. Initially, I was gonna go all with one color, but I decided to go multicolored here, and I'm actually really happy that I did. I think the final result looks a lot better. And then we went in and built the actual sort of a hand or arm or claw this is a really kind of cool effect, I think, using some flesh blocks, you can kind of come up with this, and then obviously filling this with water and a couple other little details. So I'd say at this point, you can probably guess what we're making, and it is indeed an underground hidden lab. Now, this lab is not your typical lab. We're obviously going for a darker theme to this, where we're trying to use all our research to understand the environment, understand the creatures, and maybe even replicate a few of them. So you can call it a mad scientist of sorts. I thought this would be kind of a different design, but we're gonna kind of keep things nice and bright on the top side, meaning, not everything's gonna be dark and secretive, just this one room is sort of the main idea. Now again, you're gonna see me repeat this caution tape or caution sign design here going all the way up to the top or mostly up to the top here. The idea is just to kind of keep this uh, going throughout the build. I like the way it looks, it adds a bit of light and it has a bit of an interesting pattern. At the top here, we're gonna keep a nice hidden area which we gotta fill in. This is where our teleportation is gonna come through. Then we're gonna use some of our walls here to go and make a singular design down the middle before fixing up this other room. Now this room here is going to be the mess hall. This is an interesting design because I want it to feel, you know, light and bright and somewhere you can relax after a hard day of evil sciencing.
So the idea was to open that up and you'll see a really interesting final part to this design. But before we do any of that, we're gonna obviously go over here and go work through what is gonna be our med bay as well as a bit of storage. So this scaffolding is a good start, but it's not gonna be the perfect design. So you'll see me switch it a couple of times before I land on something I like. When it comes to the actual sort of med bay and storage, I wasn't really sure which one was gonna be on what floor. So I had to kind of play around with this. And while I was thinking about that, I went back and added some more ventilation here. I think the ventilation looks really good. Now we are just using some adamantite here and just putting these into a block form, but then I ended up switching that for grates, which I think the alternating patterns actually look pretty good here, at least in my opinion. Oh, and if you're wondering, the other part of those fans is crimptain. So with that done, guys, we then go ahead and start adding all the little details in this area. So again, you can see we're adding a bunch of beds, some dressers, some chests and storage, but there is one real cool feature. So this little part here that I'm making, is gonna be these sort of power supply. Now this power supply station is gonna be powering up this mech, which I took a bit of a cue from a in the movie and try to make it somewhat similar or at least kind of similar and I think overall I really do like the way this looks it looks like it's being charged it's got some really cool details I went with a black and blue theme and I am not discouraged by the final result there and then it was just a question of going to the med bay uh, separating out the room adding some ventilation and then you know making this look a little bit nicer and of course you know at the end we're gonna add the nice red cross sign that's gonna make this look a lot better now you'll notice I'm also trying to figure out which bed I like and uh, yeah we swapped them quite often and then when that I was done we actually added a couple glowing areas under the floors before moving back to our mess hall so the mess hall is going to have a lot of details i want to make this look a lot nicer and brighter so you'll see i do a lot of work internally just adding you know food and decor some tables some lighting that kind of thing and then working on the landscaping on the outside which again i think adds a tremendously interesting element to this design and doesn't make it feel super evil all the time it has a sort of nicer feel to it so again you could opt not to go for this if you want but but I thought this was a nice little touch, at least in my opinion. And guys, with all that stuff done, all that's left to do is show off the final product. Alright guys, so with our evil and somewhat spooky lab now done, I'm gonna go ahead and cover all of the materials like I promised at the beginning of this video. So to start guys, you're gonna see that it's a pretty full chest. I mean, it's not completely full, but we are using a lot of different blocks, but I think the main areas to focus on are gonna be the walls for you if you're looking to make something similar. So if you wanna take a closer look guys, of course, feel free to pause here, take a closer look, but while that's being done, I'm gonna go ahead and start covering all of these walls. So to start guys, you're gonna see that we did use a lot of platinum brick wall. Now I use this for the main elevator shaft and then I also use it for some of the support uh, in the actual sort of mess hall so not something that's absolutely everywhere but I do like the way that it looks uh, we also then went of course with some topaz gem spark and some other gem spark that we just painted and then we also went ahead and used some crimson blister walls uh, as well as some midnight confetti these are for the TVs and the blister walls of course are just thrown here and there throughout the design and then we actually went with a little bit of adamantite beam wall as well as some boreal wall so uh, again these are just really kind of flat neutral colors that I really like. Now, one wall that I did not uh, add here is gonna be uh, right here. You can see that we're using some cobalt. So this is some cobalt brick wall and we painted that white. So uh, feel free to just remind yourself to add that into this list as well. For this upper room, we went with palladium wall everywhere. So I do like the way this looks. It kind of has a different sort of texture and design to it. It's not perfect, but it is a nice look in my opinion. And you can, of course, replace this with anything you want, but I wanted something flat so not everything felt metallic and well, sort of the same. Now, moving on to the actual blocks, guys, we did actually use a number of different blocks. I think the ones that are most interesting to me are the crimptain brick and probably the nebula fragments. Now, the nebula fragments are gonna be throughout the actual pipes. You can't really see them because they are buried in the colors uh, with the walls here. So it just makes it a little shiny, makes it a little more interesting and a little more textured, but very, very tiny touches. Now, the other thing that we use a lot, like I said, was crimptain brick. This was fun to actually use here because I used it for some of the fans. I used it for a couple different areas. Again, not really meant to stand out really quite a lot as much as you might think and then really beyond that we have some meteorite some tin plating uh, some stone accent slab and some stone slab uh, and then some conveyor belts and of course some grates again for fans we use a little bit of glass obviously some adamantite beam and a whole lot of palladium columns as well as platinum bricks now finally when it comes to paints obviously we have a lot of them tons of gray paint lots of black paint some shadow paint in very specific areas some deep violet paint some deep green some deep cyan and some deep red now obviously these paints are all over the place 
Most of them are going to be centered in our actual lab. Again, I went with a multicolored look here because I thought it looked a little bit more interesting, a little bit nicer, and then a little bit of white paint for, you know, just about everything else. So nothing too crazy here, guys. Like I said, it looks like a lot. This is a pretty compact build with a lot of detail. I think overall, this is going to be something that you're going to be able to play with and just keep your eyes on different textures and different materials that you like, because those will help you make any design that you want. You do not have to copy anything I'm doing, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of a better idea. All right, guys, so there you go. There are all of the materials that I used for this particular build. I know this seems like a lot of stuff when you just take it all in visually. It's really just about kind of flip-flopping things, adding different areas with different textures, and just trying to make the most of your color palette. So hopefully this gives you a bit more insight, but with all that said, let's move on with the rest of the video. So yeah, mystery solved, guys. There is our epic underground lab. This is actually a build that people have been asking for, but I decided to kind of break it up into two parts. I originally wanted a very easy and kind of, I guess, simple design for the lab with the tower being all connected and more modern. But then I said, you know what? Why don't we pivot into something a little bit more interesting? So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how I put this together. There's a ton of details and features that I really like. Obviously, the lab itself stands out tremendously. I think the just general decoration and I guess feel of of it is kind of it's not quite steampunk it's not quite futuristic and it's not quite super villain or evil it's kind of a nice blend of all three and i just i just think it really works really really well now of course i figured if you're going to be working on all these evil experiments you're probably going to need to well have a med bay nearby in case something goes wrong so that was a pretty easy add but i will say probably my favorite feature and this is kind of a toss-up but i'd say my favorite one is probably the little mech that we made with the little charging station those three little i guess batteries that are kind of you know giving it power even though it's just sitting they're idling. I, I don't know. That storage area is fine, but that make to me is a really fun little add. And then maybe a close second or a 1A, a 1B is going to be the mess hall, but just the little window. That little window, I know it doesn't really need to be there, but I just really like making those kinds of parts or I guess elements in a design. So for me, that was a really nice add, but not one that necessarily everyone's going to want to go with. But uh, yeah, it's probably mech number one and uh, window area, I guess, number two. But of course, guys, that's just my opinion. So let me know what you think in the comments down below what did you like what did you maybe not like or what would you change to make it look a little bit more evil or would you even lean more evil or make it more bright i guess or a good side of things i don't know i'm curious to know your thoughts and hopefully you guys also are liking this somewhat different format i am thinking about doing some of these two-part videos like this maybe in three-part videos where we kind of start with the idea concept and build it out it's a little bit trickier for me because i I'm, I'm not very good at kind of doing those things all the time but this was really fun to do so i am hoping that you guys enjoyed it anyways that's it for me guys so thank you so much for watching until the end of this video as always thumbs if you liked it subs if you loved it we will see you in the next one